Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy ones and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the holy ones because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. Of this you have already heard through the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, so also among you. From the day you heard it and came to know the grace of God and truth, as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow slave, who is a trustworthy minister of Christ on your behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I, like a green olive tree in the house of God, trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will thank you always for what you have done and proclaim the goodness of your name before your faithful ones. sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. 
At sunset, all who had people sick were with various diseases brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. The demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him. And when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching to this in the synagogues in Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a lot for us to unpack here from this gospel passage today. I have been to Jerusalem. I have been to the synagogue that is mentioned here in the gospel. And I have been to Simon's house. And the distance between the, from the synagogue to Simon's house is like crossing the street. It wasn't that big a distance. It was a small place where his mother-in-law was apparently lying down there with fever. Our Lord Jesus must have been there pe preaching already in the synagogue, and afterward they were going to his house for a meal. I'm sure Peter's mother-in-law was a good cook, so, you know, she probably was preparing a meal for them. They came home, and she was sick, so they weren't going to be able to eat. So the other guy said, um, <clears throat> you know, to our Lord Jesus and said, you know, uh, she's sick. So it said they interceded with him about her. So they came in different numbers, more than one, came to him and said, can you do something for her? And he went over, he rebuked the fever, the fever left her, and she got up, immediately waited on them. So this is a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, attitude of service. Um, uh, you know, she got well so that she could serve our Lord uh, and the disciples uh, there at the house. Now, later on in the day, word got out, and other people in the town began to bring those who were sick, those who were possessed, those who were uh, uh, ill to the house. And each and every one of them that brought the ones who were sick and ill to him, he rebuked the fever, he rebuked the illness, he rebuked the demons, and they left. This is powerful. Now, how many of you, when you pray... How many of you, when you pray, you have the attitude, you know, he's not going to do anything for me anyway, but just in case, can you cure that person? Just in case, can you do something about my situation or my problem? How is your attitude when you approach prayer? Is it that, that attitude of cynicism that we have here in our modern world? I can do it myself, but just in case, um, would you, could you do something? So it's not an attitude of faith. It's not an attitude of abandonment into the mercy and the divine providence of God. It's an attitude of, well, if you could do something, all right. You know, sort of approaching God as though he's an, an indifferent God. A God who really is too big to care about the little problems, the little illnesses, the uh, being stuck with a, 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 a particular sin or a particular bad habit. Uh, if you could do something. And then this is an attitude that was already demonstrated by others in the scriptures too, right? The synagogue leader that came to him and said, if you could do something. Would you come? It's an attitude, uh, not of faith. It's an attitude of what if? I want to cover all my bases. I know I can do this. I know this could be done here. But just in case, maybe I should also bring it to the Lord. So it's not an attitude of faith at all. But these people who came to our Lord, they came with faith. They came with an attitude of, I need you, please help. These persons are sick. My daughter is possessed. 
this person is ill, this people have fever, and he, each and every one of them, he rebuked the fever, he rebuked the demons, and they left. And then he went away to a deserted place to pray, we heard, with the disciples, and the people met them, him, them there, preventing, trying to prevent him from leaving their town. Because we have a few more at home, we couldn't get to you, you yet. He said, well, wait, well, I have to go to other towns and other villages too. I'm not here just for one. I'm here to bring the good news to all the other towns as well. And so this is, a, I think this is a, a point for, of reflection for all of us. Make us think about and evaluate what attitude do we have when we come to prayer. And, and I think there's emphasis here is that prayer in community, prayers with others are more effective than prayers individually offered up. So Jesus, our Lord, said, where two or three are gathered in my name, what did he say? There I am in their midst. So when we come to prayer as a group, when we come to prayer as a family, when we come to prayer as a community, our prayers are much more effective, much more powerful, because it has a better, a greater effect with the presence of, Lord, of our Lord and God there. And so I think these are all really a special reminder for us to check our attitude when we come to prayer. How is it, how disposed are we when we come to prayer before God? Do we have an indifferent attitude? Do we have an attitude of cynicism? Do we have an attitude, or do we have an attitude of faith disposed to the abandonment into the providence of God? Only with faith can those who come in prayer have their prayers answered. So let us ask the Lord today to strengthen us so that we may come to our Lord like the disciples did to intercede for our family, for our friends, those who are near and dear to us, and even for ourselves, that we may be healed, that we may be sanctified, that we may be made into the disciple of Christ that each and every one of us are called to be. God, our Father, knows our needs and is always ready to respond. With confidence in God's love, we approach him with the needs of our world. We pray for the Holy Father. We pray for all the leaders of the church that the light of Christ continue to illuminate their every step. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who make decisions that affect the lives of others. May they be guided by compassion and by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who live in poverty. May God in his mercy provide for their needs and grant them relief. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, especially our loved ones, our family, and our friends. May, the, may they be warmly welcomed by the angels and saints into God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. In a special way today, we pray for the special intentions of Father Godfrey Bushmaker, God of compassion, hear these prayers we present to you and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have 
this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it would become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion uh, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, <clears throat> until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints that please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who go about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Immaculate Mary, your praises, you reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Amen.